Hi, I'm Alfie Reft, one of the assistants for our USA Women's National Team, and you're watching the USA Volleyball Show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the USA Volleyball Show. We are the official podcast of USA Volleyball. I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you for tuning into a, another show. And this time, I'd actually like to welcome back uh, USA Volleyball's communication manager, manager, wow, manager, BJ Hepner Evans. BJ, how are you Thanks. doing today? <laughs> I'm great, Clarence. Thanks so much. I'm, it's good to be back. I see uh, you're in a little bit of a different location right now at the time of the recording. What's going on over there? Uh, I am at the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Training Center here in Colorado Springs. We're here for our boys spring training series through our national team development program. Very exciting. Very exciting. You're over there. I'm over here in Orlando gearing up for sunshine and at the time sunshine sunshine classic for those of you who are aware of that qualifier which all of you listening should probably be aware of that too and hectic going on for setup and then over the weekend just going to be uh you know a volleypalooza like we like to say and kind of getting into it for the episode but yeah what's going on in your life BJ what's new? Gosh, um, it seems like the media has uh, remembered earlier than usual that the Olympics are this year, and I'm mm -hmm. getting a lot of requests for our athletes from mm -hmm. uh, media across the country, which is really exciting. I think Paris is going to be um, one of the best games we've had in a long time, and oh, yeah. I'm really excited for it. How about you? Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, you know, same old here, you know, coaching on my end and doing a whole bunch of other stuff there too. But man, I bet you're going to have such a good time in Paris. The fact there's that, that, that like the, like there's actually going to be spectators this time too, with fans <laughs> and a whole audience is there too. I bet the energy is going to be insane. I'm, I'm totally jealous for you to that. You get to go ahead and travel and, you know, do all the fun stuff there. I'm hoping it's a full 180 from Tokyo where, <laughs> you know, silence reigned, uh, and uh, definitely, I want I want family, friends, fans. Uh, super excited to see our teams competing there. Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, I mean, I, I again, we'll just be following along over uh, over you know our websites and social media and stuff there too. But uh, I want to look to your social media too for all the inside scoop and yeah, your take on a lot of the things there too. So yeah, I'm I wish you the best of luck there, and I know it's getting ready to be right into that busy season for you guys as well. Yeah, super busy. We uh, yeah. we have um, this event going on here at the training center this week, and then um, we start getting ready for uh, Volleyball Nations League, which is coming up for our indoor teams, and our beach teams are also competing this week in Doha. So, yeah, we have a lot to keep track of. A whole lot to keep track of. All right. Do um, you want to go ahead and jump into a little recap of our last episode? Sure. So, if you missed our last episode, go back and check it out. In episode 86, Clarence and Steven were back in action, live-ish, from the Women's <laughs> National Team Open Program, which was also here in Colorado Springs. Um, they sat down with now three-time friend of the pod, three-time Olymp Olympian, Olympic gold medalist, and MVP, and U.S. Women's National Team outside hitter, Jordan Larson. What else can we say? Um we only had a short time with Jordan as she had a heavy schedule at the open program, also known as Volley Palooza, as Karch likes to call it. <laughs> she talked about preparing for the season, visiting the open program, and some of her goals for this year, which, you know, we're hoping certainly includes Paris. Check it out on the podcast and watch the video episode on YouTube and the USA Volleyball website. You can watch it or listen to it, but if you watch it, you can see the beautiful faces of Clarence, Steven, and Jordan. <laughs> Now it's time for the news with Hughes. All right. As a reminder, you guys, uh, registration is open for the 2024 Boys Junior National Championship, Girls 18s Junior National Championship, 11s to 13s, and 14s through 17s, in addition to our open national championship for adults, and a lot along with our beach nationals. A whole lot of registrations are opening up too, so make sure you register for all the events that apply to you, your team, and your club, et cetera, et cetera, and don't miss your chance to become the next national champion. Also, pro better, pro better, bro. well, I can't talk today, whatever, all right. Pro Volleyball Federation's uh, inaugural season is underway. There are weekly matches streaming for free. You can see some of our national team athletes like Kendall White or friend of the pod, Morgan Hentz. Make sure you tune in so you don't miss any of that action over there. 
Love having even more pro volleyball in the United States. We love it. Soon, you'll be able to watch it all year long. Tickets are available for it. The USA Volleyball of Fame being held on May 22nd in Columbus, Ohio. Join USA Volleyball as we celebrate all-time greats such as Kathy DeBoer, Carl McGowan, Dane Blanton, Robin Amo, and another friend of the pod, Reed Pretty. Tickets are on our website and available, so make sure you purchase and you plan on attending. The FIVB Beach Pro Tour is back and in action. Going on right now in Doha, Qatar, the Elite 16 Doha through March 9th. Tune in to volleyballworld.tv to watch those matches. Follow along all of the action on USA Volleyball social medias. For more on the latest news, you know you can visit usavolleyball.org. Now, on today's show, we had the absolute pleasure of sitting down with Justine Wong Orantes as she talks about how she was introduced to the game of volleyball, playing both um, on the beach and indoor side of things. She also shares with her uh, with her. She also shares with us her Olympic experience and leading up to the Tokyo Games. You can also, uh, you know, listen to Justine talk about the upcoming 2024 U.S. Women's National Team season, talking about joining the new League One Volleyball. Uh, I almost said Volleyball Federation. Excuse me. <laughs> joining the new League One Volleyball organization and so much more there. Uh, but again, that's enough from us. Let's jump right into our conversation with Justine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get things kicked off. Very easy question. We like to ask all of our first time guests here, too. Um, I think we know historically you have a very, very family oriented, very family centric volleyball background. But how would you specifically describe your introduction to the game of volleyball? Yeah, well, I would also agree that my my family is very well known in in the volleyball world, they have just always like lived and breathed volleyball. And so that's mm. kind of all I've ever known. And at a young age, um, around six years old is when I started to get introduced with uh, my dad. He was a, a local coach at Long Beach City College, and he took me to a camp with him. And um, me just being super curious, wanted to know what the game was. And was always asking someone to pepper with me. And so I was never shy about that. And um, the more and more that I, I guess, exposed myself to volleyball and my parents exposing me to volleyball is when I I started to grow to love it. And so they enrolled me in club volleyball at Mizuno Long Beach. And my dad was a coach there. And later on, my my brother ended up playing there. And so we were um, always around that, that gym and just those people, Joy and um, as you guys might know, Matt Fierberger is on the men's side. They are the co-directors of that club. And so it became a family to me. And I actually spent 10 years there playing at that club. And um, they just opened a lot of doors for me and kind of um, allowed me to grow as a person and as a as a volleyball player. And so it was a, a really cool environment to be in. And it's very rare, I feel like nowadays that people stick to one club as as a youth athlete and so i was very fortunate in that sense yeah so fun fact i actually grew up in long beach as well i grew up on the yeah over on the north side and i went to jordan high school i didn't play club volleyball Uh, i got introduced to the game a little too you know late for that but i mean yeah i love hearing about long beach city college and just all the you know visit on long beach all that stuff's really cool when did you kind of figure out that like, you know, kind of volleyball is something you love or like, you know, that hook that just kind of got you kind of going and, you know, that realization you should even play at the next level. Yeah, I think so growing up when I was like eight to maybe like 15 years old, I was doing both volleyball and soccer. And I think it was it was just, you know, soccer is that one that one sport for me that I was like, oh, let me just do it to stay, you know, active. And um, it was really fun for a while. And then It was at that 15, 16 year old mark where I was like, okay, I need to choose because I'm traveling for both and and which one do I really am loving and what do I want to pursue more? And that was volleyball. So I would say around that time was when I was like, okay, let me commit myself fully to the sport and I really want to see what I where I can go with volleyball. Um, And it was just so fun. I mean, I was playing on the beach I was playing indoor and so it was it was basically all year round um and I just grew to love it more and more Mm -hmm. 
I think we were going to ask if you played both uh, simultaneously, uh, beach and indoor, and then what made you pick indoor over beach? Yeah, that that one's a tough question, only because, you know, growing up in California, you have the pretty beaches, and I was always at the beach. I mean, every summer you would see me there every day, whether it was like just being there with my friends or actually playing volleyball. And um, I had a partner, Sarah Hughes, who is now with Beach USA Volleyball and going for her first Olympics. Um, Me and her were actually beach partners. And then we were also indoor volleyball teammates. And so it was so easy to be around her. And we were always, you know, just on the beach and um, on the volleyball court. And so being around her, it was so fun to play beach. But I think for me, the indoor game and having multiple positions and just a lot more of a, you know, there's there's just like this ultimate goal that everyone has to play together. And there's a there's this team mission that we want to be successful and we have to kind of put all these pieces together. For me, that was, um, I connected well with that. And so that I wanted to pursue. And um, I loved beach volleyball. I loved what the game taught me for indoor volleyball. But at the end, I just really, you know, I loved indoor just a little bit more. Um, Now, some people might not know, but you went on to play at Nebraska. Um, And then... How from there did you make the jump to the national team? Yeah, so I, around my junior and senior year I at Nebraska, I was really just, you know, improving a lot. And I our team was super talented. And I just felt like on my, on the mental side of things, I just felt like I was, you know, so, so confident. And so I feel like that really took me even just a step further in my volleyball game. And um, at the end of the season for the junior and senior year, I earned uh, all American honors. And so um, when you're kind of in that radar, it's when Karch is like, okay, you know, we have you in our, in our vision. And um, he invited me after my senior year at Nebraska. And so I came out in 2017 of that summer and started with the women's national team. And, um, yeah, that, that transition was, was different for sure. But, um, I think, you know, looking back, it's, it was, it was never just like this one easy coast. It was a lot of ups and downs, but I'm I'm super thankful for it. And I mean, I'm sure we'll touch on it a little bit, but it's just something that I always like reflect back on. And I'm like, wow, I'm so, so thankful for it. Was it something that was always a goal of yours or did it, was it not until Karch like brought it up that you were, that you were on the radar that you were like, oh, wait a second, this might be fun. Yeah. I think in the back of my mind, it was always, it was always on my radar. However, when I was younger, I, I was playing setter in club volleyball. And so it was a little bit of a hurdle for me to like finally get to that, like, I guess that that vision or just like that mindset that I'm like good enough to be, you know, at a high level and on the U S women's national team. So that was like at Nebraska, that was always like a struggle for me. It's like, okay, am I good enough? How do I get there? What do I need to do to get there? And so once, you know, junior, senior year, I think it was, you know, the help of like my teammates too, and being so talented, but I was like, okay, well, yeah, maybe I can do this. And then do you remember your, first competition with the national team and what that was like um I believe that was in Grand Prix um the former Volleyball Nations League and that one was super fun because we had a bunch of like rookies and everyone was just trying to figure it out and we were all like nervous and um also excited as well but um it was our first tournament you know post Rio Olympics so we were like all right let's Let's kind of all stick together and um, do what we can for each other. Mm-hmm. Can you talk through the, I guess, the nerves or what the atmosphere is like for when you first walked into, you know, your first national team practice and then compared to what it's like now? Yeah, um, I think I cried at the end of the first week. I was like, this is so overwhelming. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and it was just, I mean, for me, it was, I guess I didn't realize how much of a, transition it was going to be from college life to professional life. I mean, everything is pretty much 
independent. I mean, you have, I mean, you have resources, of course, with, you know, like athletic trainers, um, nutrition, all these things, coaches, da, da, da. But like, it's really up to you for you to like go and seek that help. Whereas like in college, I feel like all that is kind of laid out on the table for you. And you're kind of like, um, you know, it's suggested that you like go and do this, this, this. But um, yeah, I once you know, those first couple of weeks, I was like, okay, yeah, I need to really um, do this on my own and really get myself in check. And, and so that part was overwhelming for me. But once I got it down and, you know, with the help of teammates, coaches, and like, just knowing that like I wasn't the only one going through that alone was definitely it put my mind at ease a little bit. Mm-hmm. Be really quick. I still want to stay on this. Like, what are some things? I know a lot of the uh, you mentioned, you know, teammates getting yourself kind of in line and on track with the uh, you know adjustment. Um, uh, a lot of that's probably mental too. What are some, uh, you know, what are some <laughs> specific things that you did to you know kind of either reset yourself or just kind of realign yourself and like what you needed to do with your your goals and intentions with the national team? You know, this could be you know helpful for anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think for me personally, I think it was just um, talking with my family and my loved ones and. Like, of course, there's going to be reassurance from them. But I think I think it's for me, like the sacrifice too. that, like I have to be, you know, for example, right now I'm in Germany playing and I'm away from my family. I'm away from my fiance. And it's just you go back to those little things. And I, well, they're not really little things. They're big things that you're trying that you're sacri- sacrificing for that ultimately is is you know, going to hopefully set you up to make a roster or make an Olympic roster. And so for me, it was reflecting back on that and just knowing what the bigger picture was. I know sometimes it's really hard to look at the bigger, bigger picture because it seems so far away. But I think once you like look at those little things that you can, you know, really accomplish in, in the short term, then that definitely helps. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Um, I know you talk a lot about this around Tokyo, but um, you were cut from the 2018 uh, World Championship team. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that was a difficult time for you. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about that and just how you came back? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like at first, like when I would get this question, I would be so like shy to, to answer it. But now like reflecting back, And just knowing that that year was such a pivotal moment in my career, I'm like so open to talking about it because I want like younger athletes to know is that even at the high level, there are going to be some struggles and there are going to be decisions that you may not like, but it's how you respond to that. And for me, it was, I mean, a huge response because in that moment, we didn't know that, you know, the pandemic was going to come and like 2020 was um, 2021 wasn't going to be the Olympic year. And so I was thinking, okay, well, I'm cut from, you know, the world championship roster. Now I only have one more, one more year. And so it was a lot of like, okay, I need to really check myself. What do I want to do? Do I want to be on the national team anymore? And so, um, yeah, that whole, that whole fall and then going into the next summer was huge, just, you know, grind to like get in the gym. Um, I stayed back and was training with the USA coaches all that fall, all that spring. And then also like lifting four times a week. So I felt like physically I was the strongest I've ever been. And so I think um, in hindsight, like that was such a good reflection year for myself and Mm -hmm. um, just for my career and what I needed. And I think, you know, sometimes you don't realize maybe what your goals are, like what your end goal is until like something like that so big happens to you. And so, yeah, for me, I'm super grateful for it. And I would do it again. I mean, it it definitely woke me up for sure. Do you have any, just say any words of wisdom or advice for say an athlete that could be not exactly in your position or, or maybe in a similar situation to where, you know, um, you know, first time around, it didn't go their way. Um, and you know, they may be kind of looking down on things and kind of in that kind of, I don't want to say negative headspace, but more of that, just, you know, what's next for me and how can I get out of this? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I would, for me and 
maybe some people can be different but I think also like writing down goals is is huge to just see it on paper and seeing like what short-term goals and what long-term goals um because those can be very different and so sometimes like seeing it on a piece of paper or however you may like on your phone or something like that sometimes that kind of gets it out of your head and like something visually that you can see is super helpful and and to me like it's super attainable and so um that's one way one strategy that can work or um you know talking about it too i think i feel like younger athletes maybe don't know how to seek help and so that can be one just um missing question because they don't know exactly where to go and so i think you know a friend a parent um a teammate anyone that's willing to listen can also be um someone that can steer you in the right direction or just mm-hmm. you know get in your ear to listen so on a definite more positive note there i mean i think <laughs> it all um we love talking about you know full circle moments and uh you know all that stuff that just kind of applies into just overcoming from you know all the hard work and the negative times that kind of happen there too i mean you got you've had a chance to be part of uh you know, literal history with winning gold in tokyo and competing uh you know with the team at the olympic and paralympics there um can you talk us through what you know your experience was like there what it felt being on the podium what it felt like just you know taking the gold for uh you know for that moment in history yeah um it's crazy to hear that we've made history because i often like forget because it i mean when you're there in the present moment you're just like oh my gosh you're trying to soak in everything and um but yeah, like reflecting back, it, it really is super cool. And it's also super cool to know like what we did beforehand leading up to the Olympics. Um, we worked a lot on ourselves and our and our culture for our team. And so I think that was the most like that part was more rewarding because like we felt like we put in the work off the court and it truly translated on the court. And um, we talked a lot about just like, um embracing each other and like embracing like our roles and that team was phenomenal phenomenal at that and and just like providing help wherever was needed and it was it was so fun oh my gosh I think um if anyone has a chance to go you know see the culture in in Japan it's super cool and how they are so you know organized they're so welcoming they're so warm to everyone and um yeah, it was the only sad part was, of course, like not having f- family and friends. But um, every every part outside of that was truly, truly amazing. I mean, Tokyo did a, an amazing job at the Olympics. You were such a star in Tokyo. I mean, you were flying around on the court. I, I totally yeah. remember the gold medal game. I remember tweeting out, is anybody else seeing Justine just like <laughs> everywhere on this court? Wow. Uh, did you feel like you were at peak performance at that point? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, I, I would, I hope I can, you know, um, implement that like every time I play, but I just felt like, (laughs) I, I just feel like truly like our team did everything that we could off the court. And so like, it just felt like so freeing to play. Like I felt not nervous at all which was so weird because it was my first olympics ever and we were playing like our pool was so hard and we were opening like um well we played argentina argentina first but then the second match was china and i was like oh my gosh i should be so so nervous for this match but for some reason i'm not and i feel like that was a true testament to like what our teammates were saying off the court just like playing for each other and just really like supporting one another and so for that like I commend them and I'm just it was it was really easy to play on the court what was it like to find out you'd made the team after after everything you've been through and you when you finally got that confirmation that you were on the Olympic team it was so emotional I mean it was super it was so emotional because um it was during a VNL tournament in the bubble that year. And it was, we were a group of 20, I believe, and um, only 12 could go. And so we had to see um, who was going to make the final roster. But 
we were in separate rooms and so it was just like of course you wanted to be happy you know for yourself for making it but you couldn't go and immediately tell someone because we were in a bubble and we were in separate rooms so it was it was honestly like such a weird feeling because um we were so isolated but I did get to call my mom like immediately after and so that was a special moment between us and just um yeah just telling her for the first time and uh she was she was so happy for me so that was really cool um yeah Mm -hmm. um has has your uh your life changed at all uh since you know kind of winning gold and you know something as small as you know being seen out in public and you know people kind of recognize you there or uh you know overseas just you know any any significant changes to to anything um i wouldn't say so much i mean i feel like now the sport is growing and growing that you see like a lot of teams and um college teams like getting a ton of attendance and and breaking records and things like that so i feel like i don't know if it was um per se like the us winning the gold medal but i feel like that was kind of like a, a spur in you know like the college or in volleyball in general um so i would say like in a whole like the sport has definitely you know been put on the map mm -hmm. So you're in Germany. Um, I know. Do they do they treat you a little differently since you have a gold medal? Has it been <laughs> easier to find jobs overseas? Um. Eh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. Um. Well, how are things going? Uh, how is life um, as a professional volleyball player overseas? Super fun. I think. Um, what I enjoy and what I really like embrace overseas is just like the different cultures and um, meeting different people from around the world. I think for me, that's super cool because I would never forget to do that with any other job. And so um, I really try to embrace that that aspect of it and also getting to travel around the world. Like um, this year, I'm, I'm playing a Champions League um, with my club team. And so it's really cool to be able to we got to go to Istanbul. We got to go to Slovenia. And so I'm really excited to um, we have actually our second round. We play tomorrow and then um, finish up one more match in pool play. Um, so it's super exciting to get to like do stuff like that and be able to see the world in, in, a, in a different lens. Mm -hmm. So we know you've played for a couple, you know, clubs uh, in Germany specifically. Um, can you talk us through your current club and why you chose them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I played for SC Potsdam. And um, for me, I, I love the German league. I think um, the competition is really good. And for Liberos, it's, it's a really stable league. And... Um, also, the location that I'm in right now is is beautiful. I mean, in Potsdam, it's it's really great, and it's 30 minutes outside of Berlin, so we get that small city feel. But also, if you wanted to go to a bigger city, you have Berlin, just like a short train ride away. And so, and the transportation here in Germany is is a one. It really is great. And so, um, yeah. So I think for me, um, the German league has always been such a stable league for me, and so. Um, when I got an offer, I was like, yes, for sure. And then it's also a bonus that they play in Champions League this year. Mm -hmm. What are some of those uh, that, you know, like there's always getting bad highs and lows. What are some of those, you know, highs and lows um, with playing overseas uh, overall? I know your location is really good. You get to play in Champions yeah. League. And uh, you mentioned, you know, being a stable league for Liberos, which I have, you know, Another follow up question there, but let's talk yeah. about those a little bit of those kind of highs and lows. Yeah, um, I would say the high is is being in a stable league like Germany. Usually, like you have no problems with salary or any finances. Mm. They're really professional in that sense. And um, also, there's no foreigner limit. So in some leagues like Italy, Turkey, um, the Asian leagues, you have a foreigner cap and so Germany doesn't. And so that um, usually means that there's a ton of Americans that come over. And so, for example, here I'm playing with um, two other Americans and across the German league, there's tons. And so when you play against an opponent, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so-and-so. And, -so. and um, you get to go and introduce yourself or say hi and hang out. And so 
that also brings a sense of home whenever you're playing. It's my cat, PK. About <laughs> he, he likes to show up on some interviews. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it's super nice um, that German, Germany is um, is very like, um, it's just very modern. Like where you're living, like, for example, groceries is never a problem. Um, people usually speak English here, which is great. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really nice place to live. Um, now talk about your next step, which is with League One Volleyball. Um, yeah. how, why did you choose uh, that amongst the leagues, all the leagues that are popping up? And uh, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, so League One, um, back in like 2020, I, I had a connection with a friend um, from high school that has been involved with League One. And she was like, hey, what would you think about you know, professional volleyball in America. And I was like, um, yes, of course, like who wouldn't? And so um, we had been in talks but since back then. And I've been a part of them ever since and um, been a part of the Athletes um, Love Council. And so um, I'm really, really excited. I, I think just now with the addition of love being announced and um, we have Pro Volley and we also have Athletes Unlimited, I just think that is so exciting for the sport and especially in America. And I hope that, you know, even like foreigners in Europe and elsewhere, like they are also seeing that excitement and, and maybe we can attract them to come to America. But it, because I do really think like we have so many talented athletes in college volleyball and, um, you know, unfortunately some of them don't want to continue because they don't want to play outside of America. And so hopefully this allows people to continue their career and just prolong it and and really have so much competition in America. And um, I really just am so excited for the future. Well, can you talk a little bit about, a little bit about your specific team? I know um, there's six uh, getting ready to, you know, get the inaugural season started, preseason to November and regular season starts in um January of 25. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're on a very exciting team in a very exciting city. So can you go yeah. ahead and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I will be playing for Love Omaha. And so I am super excited to go back to Nebraska. Not excited for the cold part, but <laughs> I'm really excited. I know I thought I was going to be done with cold weather. but Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I really am excited. Um, Nebraska, I mean, as you guys have probably seen on on everything Nebraska, they're just selling out all these records. Yeah. They had an amazing record in the fall. And and so to go back and be a part of a state that like truly just like idolizes volleyball, it's so cool to see. And I really hope that we can like keep going with that path. And um, and yeah, I, I'm excited to return because I still have so many like special people in my heart that are there. And so I'm really excited for it. Mm. Was it fun to watch Nebraska this season? You were, I know you were up on the, the video board at the big, at the big game. Uh, you couldn't be there because of Norseka, I think, but yeah. you and you and Jordan both did a uh, video messages to the crowd and, uh, and then just watching their, their fantastic season. Yeah. Uh, which unfortunately they didn't quite. I know. Make it all the way. But uh, was it fun to watch them this season? Yes. Oh my gosh. They're, they're going to be. You know, they're going to be good for a very long time. So I'm really excited. And I hope that they don't get discouraged by by um, the the end of their season because they really are going to be so good for the next three, four years. So it's cool. Mm -hmm. Whoopsie. What are your thoughts on um, just the the sellout crowd at the at the football stadium uh like what what like that's insane like just kind of yeah. talking about it now and thinking back on it so what are your what are your personal thoughts on just yeah. you know how that's applied to the growth of volleyball mm -hmm. yeah i i was like shocked but then i wasn't because i was like okay if anyone's going to do it it's going to be nebraska um i was really bummed that like we couldn't be a part of it just because I mean, it was something in history making. And so um, but I, I'm I'm happy that we got to see it from afar. But it was just I just like the attention to detail, like to every last minute. And um, it was they truly like made it seem like it was this 
this event that was like they expected to make history books. And so I think that kind of standard and expectation that Nebraska volleyball and just like the state of Nebraska um, exhibits like that is what we need for the sport. And um, I'm just yeah, I'm really happy that it's continuing like it's continuing along like I, I was I always see like on social media, like, okay, now Wisconsin, you know, made an attendance record and so and so made it, I think like Iowa or something. I, I, but like, there's just so many different schools that are like jumping on board. And, um, and it's really, it's really exciting for the sport because I feel like now it's just, it's getting more exposure and, and that's really what we need. And, um, and it's the viewership that, at first, like, at least when I was back in college, it was like, okay, well, you know, what, what channel are we going to be on? And now <laughs> like the, the finals is on AD. I was like, that is so cool. Um, and yeah, there's just so many like little like TikToks or whatever, like so many people, like football players are getting involved with volleyball. Like there's just so many people. I'm like, okay, this is what we're talking about. This is what, you know, volleyball is a real hype. And so I, I it's really cool to see for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> when you played at Nebraska, your jersey number was four, and on the national team, your jersey number is four. Is there any significance to the number four for you, or is it just what you what you were given? <laughs> uh, no, it had significance. My dad was number four when he was playing, and so I took that jersey. And then my my brother actually was five for like the longest time, and he was. Um, it was after my mom because she was always uh, number five when she was five. So it was it was cool. I had my dad's number. My brother had my mom's number. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so I know we're kind of getting towards the you know tail end of our questions here, and uh, um, you know, kind of before we uh, kind of you know wrap things up, um, you know. You're engaged and, you know, you have a wedding, uh, you know, kind of in the planning process stages of uh, late October. How is that going? You know, wedding planning, especially around a busy schedule like yourself, can be insane. So you want to talk us through just, you know, how's that going for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we are currently in the process of sending our our save the dates. And, um, yeah, we've got like our venue down. We have our our DJ, we actually just hired a violinist to play at cocktail hour. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, just <laughs> little things were starting to check off. Um, but yeah, I feel like I need to like set a like deadline for everything because once we, before I know it, it's going to be here. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's really helpful that Andrew, my fiance is like back home and he's like, okay, whatever you need me to do, I'll do. And so it's, it's been really, um, uh, just, a, a yeah. Um, yeah. He's been really helpful with it. Mm-hmm. You have to have a lot of support planning a wedding overseas. I know that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I think that kind of, you know, wraps things up uh, on our end. Do you have anything else you just maybe want to, you know, let the listeners know about maybe something that we left on the table or just anything along the lines there too. I think this has been a really cool conversation. Yeah, no, I think we hit it all. I think maybe we can start um, talking about VNL since we're getting to host one week. That would be cool like because last year they really showed up. The fans really showed up in Arlington. So that was super cool to see. Mm-hmm. You will. You'll be back in Arlington in 2024, yeah. not for the finals, but but for a uh, for at, at least, least for a uh, week. Yeah, for, for one weekend. Yeah. Um, are you getting Are you getting excited for for VNL? Are you getting excited to be back in red, white, and blue? Yes. Yes. For sure. It's gonna be a. It's going to be a busy 2024 for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. 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 So, I mean, uh, where where can, you know, listeners follow you on, you know, social media or, uh, you know, follow along your journey playing overseas or League One or literally everything in between? Where, yeah. where can people keep up with your life? You know? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, Jay Wongarantes, and also League One Volleyball um, to, yeah, to look at any more updates about the league. Or also we have um, a website, 
lobb.com is the website and that's just a lot of more information about cities founding athletes um when we're launching all of that and of course more details will come as we as we go on into 2024 i can't believe we're a week in to 2024 <laughs> <laughs> and uh hitting the ground running yeah yeah, but again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your super busy schedule. You know, we know overseas is tough planning and you got a lot going on, you know, wedding, volleyball, and everything <laughs> in between personally too. But we really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, sit down and have an interview with us too. I think we uh think this is a great, uh great okay. conversation for sure. Nice. Yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you guys so much. Thanks, Justine. All right. See you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, Chris. Bye, Lauren. Bye, Severn. (laughs) Bye, Justine. Thank you. Thanks again, Justine, for taking time to join us on the show. Clarence, I just think Justine's story is so inspirational and should be something that young volleyball players can really learn from, uh, from not being on the team in 2018 and 2019 to making it onto the Olympic team and competing in 2021 and winning a gold medal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't make the team, but it doesn't mean you should you should give up. It means, uh, you know, maybe you need to go back and work harder. I know. I I 100 percent agree with that. I mean, you I mean, you you guys heard it in the interview and you've seen her play do the talking for her across the board uh, from the national team to, you know, her performances in college and also, um, you know, at the highest level there as well, too. And uh, I think to, you know, hear that and then also really just take in the fact that uh, she's such a key proponent to, you know, the team winning gold in Tokyo during that and just having, you know, a great head on her shoulders, a great mentality. Like you said, BJ, her being able to bounce back from, you know, some adversity in life. It's just, it's really a testament to what she has done and is continues to do as an athlete and just representative of the of the women's national team and it also makes me so very excited to see uh you know what what uh what she's able to bring to the table with for the team going into 24 like i said paris is going to be very exciting and it's just going to be uh you know all eyes on you kind of thing so i really can't uh, i can't wait to see you know how the season goes. I can't wait to see what VNL is like, and you know, just going to be a spectator uh, <laughs> from the outside looking in. But just can't uh, can't wait for sure. Um, I think with that being said, again, Justine, thank you so much for taking the time to interview uh, with us, taking some time out of your busy schedule, and we wish you the best of luck this season. With that being said, I think it's now time for some upcoming events. Yeah, here we go. Um, The second weekend of the 2024 Sunshine Classic Girls National Qualifier will be March 8 through 10 in Orlando. I think you can see Clarence there if you look hard enough. (laughs) Clearly in our Uh, Christmas lounge, just hanging out, you know. (laughs) There you go. The 2024 Northeast Girls Qualifier and 18s Qualifier will be March 8 through 10th in Philadelphia. USA Volleyball Beach Tour, the Florida Coquino Beach National Qualifier, March 9 and 10 in Holmes Beach, Florida. The USA Volleyball Beach Tour Lone Star Austin Juniors National Qualifier will be March 9 through 10 in Cedar Park, Texas. And Sierra Girls 18's National Qualifier March 16 through 18 in Sacramento. Good luck to all the athletes and clubs competing and find more details about upcoming events at usavolleyball.org. All right, now on to the pro side of things. First, like we mentioned in the beginning of the episode, we have the Beach Pro Tour Elite 16 in Doha that is going on right now. We also have the Beach Pro Tour Futures uh, in Mount Manguni in New Zealand happening March 5th through the 9th. Up next after that, we have the Beach Pro Tour Futures again in Kulangata Beach um, from March 20th through the 24th in Australia. Good luck to all of the athletes competing and safe travels to these very, very, very unique destinations. <laughs> Check out usvolleyball.org for men's and women's national team updates from their pro leagues as well. Remember, listeners, you can rate, review, share this podcast with your friends, families, teammates, and everyone else in between because it really helps this podcast grow and reach vastly new listeners. Make sure you check out our video episodes on our website and on YouTube. We thank you all for your continued support. It is so much appreciated, you guys. 
Um, if you know of a club that should be featured or a story you want us to share, make sure you email us at the USAV show at USAV.org. Leave us feedback. Again, let us know how we're doing. Let us know about any other future topics you want us to get on the, uh, the podcast and guests. We can do our best to make sure we bring it up. Uh, new episodes drop every other week. And until then, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. This has been the USA Volleyball Show with Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson. It's produced by Curtis Ward. Our content producer is Lara Fawcett. Our marketing lead is Bree Jaycox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.